Hi, my name is Tara Jacobson, and I'm doing this yoga practice for SRJC. We have a professional development day, and this is one of the options. Um, but I'm going to have it public on my YouTube channel, so you can feel free to share it or utilize it anytime you'd like. Um, if you'd like to listen to music while you do yoga practice, I actually created two specific playlists for this practice that you can kind of choose your own adventure and what music style you would want to enjoy. Um, my playlist is public on iTunes. So if you go into your iTunes app and you uh, go into search feature and choose um, not your own library, but Apple Music in general, you just put up in that search bar at Tara Jacobson, um, J-A-C-O-B-S-O-N, and my um, account will come up and the playlist, the two options are SRJC Yacht Rock Yoga, so a little Yacht Rock Music playlist, or you could do SRJC Yoga Mood, and that's more of a softer uh, yoga music playlist. So if you want to utilize that, you're welcome to do that. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, if you have a hand towel available, I highly recommend grabbing that right now. Um, it could be a kitchen hand towel or bathroom or even a larger towel. Um, or if you have a yoga strap, that's great. If you have yoga blocks, I highly re recommend those. If you don't have that, that's fine. Um, also a yoga mat is helpful and a blanket. So we'll go ahead and get started. We'll set, start seated. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm actually sit, um, seated on a block right now. And I like this position because it sets my hips up a little bit higher than my knees, which helps reduce pressure on the low back. So if your back starts to hurt you when you're seated, uh, this is a great option for you. You can sit on a pillow. You can bring your hands to your lap or if they feel comfortable. It's gonna lengthen our spine. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Let's start by taking a nice deep cleansing breath. This portion of our practice is called the centering portion where we prepare our mind and body by sort of disconnecting to the earlier days activities and what's on our mind. Um, we sort of unplug from those thoughts and we bring our awareness into our body and prepare for our yoga practice. So to do this, we're gonna start with a pranayama yoga breath called Samavriti. It's um, also called square breath. So we're going to try to equalize our inhale and exhale, starting with four counts for the inhale and four counts with the exhale. You can start whenever you're ready. We can move this to a square breath, breath by adding a retention after the inhale for four counts. You inhale for four, retain the breath for four counts, exhale for four, and then retain the exhale for four counts, creating a more square breath, samagriti. You can start whenever you're ready.
Go ahead and do one more round or finish the round you're working on. When you're complete, go ahead and go back to normal breathing and open your eyes. So for today's practice, we're going to focus on a lot of the areas that can be really tight when we sit a lot. So our hip flexors, our hamstrings, even through our shoulders and our chest. And I also like to do um, start us off with a mudra. Um, so this is Ganesha mudra and um, take you step by step through it. So Ganesha is a Hindu deity known for removing obstacles. So that's the theme and the essence of doing this mudra. So we start by bringing our hands and mudra is just what we call pose for the hands, position for the hands. So we go to um, prayer position at the heart, which is Anjali mudra. And then you're gonna rotate your hands so that your right palm is facing in and your fingertips are pointing towards your elbows. And then we slide out and clasp those fingers. We give just a little bit of tension as we pull apart. So this also, this um, arms up across in front of the heart is also a symbol that sometimes we can be our own obstacle. And um, Ganesha is known to put obstacles in our way as a way to build resilience and confidence. As we can think about that essence of um, being able to remove obstacles that are in our way and that sometimes those obstacles are of our own accord. And while we're doing this, you can breathe. You're welcome to say the, um, the Ganesh mantra, which is Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha. So with each exhale, Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha or you could just say gum. And then we we'll repeat that on the other side. So we're going to unclasp those fingertips. We'll go back to that prayer position, the Anjali Mudra. And then you rotate so that your left palm is facing towards you, your fingertips toward the elbows. Then slide out. And we'll take about five or six breaths, repeating the mantra silently. Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha. After you finish your last exhale and you can rotate back to the Anjali Mudra, take a nice deep breath in, pressing up to the ceiling. Exhale, open those arms out to the side and just the opposite. Inhale, bring those arms up and exhale to the heart center. Let's extend those uh, legs out. A little break if you're on a block, you can remove that. Shake out those legs, we're being crossed for a while. And inhale, bringing that left arm up as high as you can, lifting up towards the ceiling and then over to the side. Nice lateral stretch for the spine. And inhale back up. And exhale to the opposite side. All that's doing is stretching this quadratus laborum, the QL. 
And that seems to be a tight spot for a lot of people in their low back. If you push with your thumb on the side, lower back, you'll feel that muscle. Okay, coming back up, we'll do another one for our glutes, which tend to be pretty tight. You're gonna cross your left ankle right above the knee and then slide this leg up right here. Now from here, you might already feel that in your glute and you're fine right where you're at. If you don't and you wanna deepen this, you can slide your glutes toward that front heel, walk your hands in, and then ultimately slowly bring that chin toward your chest. Give yourself a breath. Okay, let's release that ankle and bring those legs out. You can shake them out a little bit. We'll switch sides. Then bring that right ankle above the knee. Slide that lower leg up and right here. You might feel that in your glute already. You're gonna stay put or you can slide your glute forward to the heel. Walk those hands in and everyone's gonna bring the chin down toward their chest slowly. the hips back. Go ahead and walk those feet out pretty wide. We're going to do a seated windshield wiper, the ancient windshield wiper pose, and draw your knees side to side. So drawing that knee down towards the ground and yoga or yoga practice today, you're just going to feel what feels good for your body. Find that sweet spot for yourself. Make those adjustments so that it feels good and comfortable. Listen to your body. A little more on each side. And let's move to an all fours position. So you're gonna, and this is where if you have a blanket, it might feel a lot more comfortable to have that underneath your knees. So you're gonna draw those knees right under the hips and the elbow, or excuse me, the Wrists are right below the shoulders. A uh, nice neutral position to start with our spine. So what I think about is pulling that belly button up and in. I have my rib, rib cage uh, tucked in so I'm not sagging. And I get a little press away from my mat. So I have some space in my shoulder joint. Look down between those fingertips. Nice and big inhale. As you exhale, you're going to press into that mat, rounding out through the shoulder blades, pulling that belly button in, pointing that tailbone back towards your heels. Chin comes to the chest. And then inhale, as the tailbone comes up, think about lengthening your spine, opening up through the belly and the chest, drawing your shoulders back, and look straight ahead along the horizon. And then with our next exhalation, we go back into our cat. And for your inhale, looking straight ahead along the horizon into cow, lengthening through that spine. Go ahead and do two more of those at your own pace. Cat cow. And then coming back to that neutral position, we're going to build up a little bit of heat here and strength with our abs, curling those toes under, pressing through those fingertips. We're going to lift the knees up just a couple inches off your mat into this crouching plank. So this one's really important. We're going to kind of push and hollow out that chest, belly buttons in, neutral spine, neck is looking straight down. You might feel a little shakiness of the muscle work. That's normal and expected. One more inhale, exhale. And then we'll release those knees, uncurl the toes, and move to a spinal balance, which is another 
great core exercise and also balance work. Right arm, left leg. You can do one at a time or both at the same time. Right arm extends, left arm. Once we're here in this position, we're gonna check in on our alignment. We want a nice straight neutral spine again with the hips even with each other. The arm and leg is parallel with the mat and you're pressing into that standing hand once again to get some space in that shoulder joint and prevent a sagging position here. And we're reaching to the opposite ends of the rooms, like someone's pulling on our fingers and toes. Let's tap our toe and our fingers down and come right back up to that parallel position. So it's not about height, it's about lengthening to the opposite ends. We'll do two more. Okay, bringing that hand and knee in and we'll press back to child's pose. We're in our child's pose. You are welcome to draw your knees open wider with your toes touching. Sometimes that feels a little bit better. Your arms can be extended. If your back's really tight, you might choose to have your elbows here just to get a little extra support for that upper body. And your hips draw all the way back to your heels. Um, if that feels comfortable, I actually, um, recovering from ACL surgery last year, my knee just recently swelled back up just a little bit. So it's not completely flexible in that way right now. So my bottom's gonna be a little bit lifted. And if you have knee issues, your bottom might be lifted too. So not all the way back. Okay, inhale, let's come up. All fours once again. Let's do that crouching plank for strength. Curl that to the toes under. When you're ready, press, lift those knees up. Breathe, look between those fingertips. Pressing, hollowing out that chest a little bit, belly buttons in. Knees are right under those hips. Hands right underneath the shoulders. One more deep breath in. Exhale. And then release those knees down and curl the toes and we'll just switch sides. We transition to left arm, right leg. You're welcome to do one limb at a time or both. We'll hold that there for a couple breaths as we um, check in our alignment. Hips are even and square with each other. Arm and leg is parallel with the mat. My rib cage and the belly button pulled up and in toward the spine. My gaze is straight down, so the neutral neck as well. And then I have some space in that shoulder joint as I press away from my mat. When you're ready, go ahead and draw those fingertips and toes down towards your mat and back up. You could also Engage that back leg muscle by kind of squeezing the glute and the leg muscles as you lift up. Adding some energy back there. Nice straight line, extension to the opposite ends of the room versus going up high or hyperextending the back. We'll do two more. Okay, bringing that knee down and Push back into another child's pose. Any way you like it. Okay, go ahead and bring those knees in and we're gonna walk our hands forward. So um, instead of the main runner, the shoulders are maybe about six or eight inches forward. As we move into our downward facing dog, if you have wrist issues, you could use your towel and fold it up so you have a little height underneath that wrist. Another option is to just press into the fingertips of that thumb and first two fingers. So you're not holding it all back at your wrist. We're gonna curl the toes under with our inhale. When you exhale, let's lift those hips up and you're gonna bring the hips back and up. 
The feet are about hip distance apart. You can walk your feet in a little bit if you need to. The ear is aligned between the upper arms. We're trying to create a nice flat back. So if we are a little bit rounded in our back, try bringing those hips and pulling that tailbone up toward the corner ceiling. And then distribute that weight so it's not all on the wrist. You're kind of having, you're giving some weight back onto those legs. Drawing the heels toward your mat. If your hamstrings are a little tight, you might need a little bend in your knees to start. And you can also walk your dog here, just kind of warming up those muscles or joining up to the balls of your feet. Nice little stretch for the arch of the foot and drawing the heels down. At any moment, if, you're, if your body tells you you're done, go ahead and come down to your child's pose. We'll hold this for a couple more breaths if your body's feeling like it's okay. And after your second breath, go ahead and draw those knees down. We're gonna step our right foot forward between the hands. So I just made one giant step, but sometimes we might need to help our leg up there. One hand on each side. This is where your blocks will come in handy. If you do have tight hamstrings and hips, I need some blocks. Help out there, make it feel a little more comfortable. And that back knee, I have mine pretty far back, but if you're pretty tight in your hips, you might have it um, more forward. So for sure the front knee will be right above that ankle. I'm going to lift up and bring our arms into cactus arms. They're kind of like football goal posts. Our hips are forward like headlights with an open belly and chest. As we bring our arms down, the left hand's gonna come on the inside of that right foot. The right arm's gonna open. And on this one, when I think about the twist, I think about from the diaphragm up is making that, that openness happen. So the thoracic area, not necessarily the low back. I'm gonna keep that knee tucked in right over the ankle joint. And you can also curl that back to under. Nice strong leg lift behind you. Gentle twist. I like a neutral position with my neck, but some people like to look up toward their hand. So just do what feels right for you. Let's bring that knee down, bring the hand down, uncurl the toe. We're gonna to shift our weight back. This is called half monkey or half split. This is a pretty intense one for the hamstring, so you might have a slight bend in that front knee if that's the case. You can also use your blocks to extend your reach here. To deepen this pose, you draw your nose toward your knee and your belly toward your thigh. Hips are pretty even with each other, so check those out. See if you can pause and find better alignment. Shifting our weight forward, let's curl that back toe under and lift that nice strong leg up behind us, lifting all the way up into a crescent lunge. So this one, we're bringing our arms all the way up to the ceiling. If you have shoulder issues and that doesn't feel good to you, you can always stick with those cactus arms or put your hands on your hips. It's a great option too. Crescent lunge with a little bit of an arc with our back. Hips are still forward like headlights. That back heel is lifted. And then we'll bring those hands down, set the front foot to meet the back foot, and we're going to transition to our downward facing dog once again. And you can adjust your feet, uh, pressing those hips back and up, that tailbone kind of points up to the corner ceiling, trying to flatten out that back neutral position, ears between the upper arms, draw those heels back when we might have a slight bend in the knees. Give yourself a couple more breaths here.
And then when you're ready, draw those knees down. Step your left foot forward between the hands. Or it might be one giant step where you might give yourself a little boost. Transition more to that runner's lunge position with the knee above the front ankle, but that back leg can be back as far as it feels comfortable on that hip. When you're ready, lengthen your spine and lifting up. Arms in cactus arms. Feel that nice opening through that hip flexor. That one's the tight one when we sit a lot. And then transition by bringing that right arm on the inside and gentle twist to the left. Thinking about opening through um, from the diaphragm up through the shoulder. Your palm is facing the same direction that you're looking. And you have the option to curl that back to under behind you and lift that leg up. Keeping that knee in front right above the ankle. It's a nice strong back leg. Energy through the back heel. Drawing that knee down, hand comes down. Uncurl the toe, and we'll shift back to half monkey or half split. Again, if you have real tight hamstrings, blocks will help. And if you want to deepen this, draw your belly towards your thigh and your nose towards your knee. Uh, hips should be pretty even here. I like to point, I'm just kind of playing around, point my toe inward on this one because it stretches that muscle right there in the front of that shin. <laughs> so you see me doing that, that's what I'm doing. That's a hard, hard one to stretch, so. On your next inhalation, let's shift our weight forward, curl that back toe under, and lifting up into our crescent lunge arms up toward the ceiling, nice strong back leg, hips forward like head bites, back heels lifted. This is a, a good balance one too, so if you're feeling a little wobbly, that's normal. Getting all those core muscles to engage to help with our balance. Um, another little check-in is that front kneecap should be in the same direction as the second and third toe. You can kind of see your big toe on the inside. Transition with the arms coming down, step back. This time we're going to plank before we do down dog. You can either do full plank or modified plank on your knees. You're pressing into those hands, kind of hollowing out your chest. Belly button pulls up and in toward the spine. Neutral position with your pelvis. So I point my tailbone back toward my heels so that your bottom's not lifted up and your back hyperextended. So again, you can be on your knees or up, and then we'll transition. Everyone goes to downward facing dog. When you shift from plank to down dog, you might need to bring your hands and feet a little bit closer. So. Okay, bending those knees. We're gonna walk our feet toward our hands Transitioning to Uttanasana, forward fold. Once we are there, um, if you're real tight in those hamstrings or low back or combination of block here is helpful, or if your back is really sore and tight, um, which I had some back issues for a while, I would just set my um, elbows on my thighs to kind of support my upper body and allow that back to open without a lot of pressure from the weight of my body kind of hanging down on it. Shake your head yes and no. Make sure you're not holding that neck up. You can have soft knees here as well. And then inhale, we're going to take our hands to our thighs, lengthen out our back really flat, chest is open. Exhale, drawing those hips down. We're going to bring our hands into Anjali Mudra. 
We're in chair now. Utkatasana. And that tailbone is to, uh, we want pointing back towards the mat so our bottom's not sticking out. You kind of draw that belly button in, point it down. You can lower down just a little bit. You'll feel that fire in the legs. And then inhale, let's press through those heels. Exhale, open to mountain or Tadasana. So I'm going to face you for a moment for this Tadasana. Feet about hip distance apart, palms are forward. And this is where we get to practice our good posture. So we're gonna broaden through the collarbone. You might even try rolling the shoulders back. Chest is open, palms forward. And then I try to bring my chin in just a little bit, lengthen through the back of my neck and pull the crown of the head up toward the ceiling or the sky. Give yourself one more breath in that standing position. And then we'll move to the top of our mat. We're gonna start a, a flow sequence. So we'll be flowing with our breath, moving from one posture to the next. Inhale, sweeping those arms up. Exhale, we're gonna glide down into that chair position. Inhale, half lift. So we draw those hands to our thighs or shins. We have a nice flat neutral back. And then exhale into our fold. Inhale, step your right foot back. We're going to keep that heel lifted and we're going to draw the arms up into that crescent lunge that we did in our warm up. Exhale, bringing the right hand down on the inside, gentle twist to the left. Inhale, lifting back up to that crescent lunge, and we're going to transition to warrior two. So as we do that, we're going to open the hips, and we're going to slide that foot in back at a, so the toes are kind of pointing to the outside edge of the mat. This front knee is still tracking on that second and third toe. The hips are pretty open. The torso is straight out from the hips, and our arms are long. So this is warrior two, or Virabhadrasana two. And then our gaze or our drishti is right over the front fingertips. You can deepen this by going deeper into that lunge. So that front thigh becomes more parallel with the mat. Inhale, drawing the hands up, we're gonna lengthen that front leg. And exhale back to your warrior two. One more time, nice strong leg. Squeezing those thigh muscles, pulling any cap up. And then take that back arm. We're going to draw it forward like we have a bow and arrow. And we're going to pull it back and we're going to visualize that bullseye. Thinking back to that Ganesha Mudra, the remover of obstacles. And then we release our arrow into the bullseye. Turning that front palm up, inhale into a reverse warrior as you expand through your rib cage. I'm looking up at my hand, but if that bugs your neck, you can just look in a neutral position. Nice strong back leg. Okay, as we cartwheel and make our way back down, a real important tip is to lift that heel up and get that hip to come forward first. So all of that's in alignment as we shift our weight down. Let's step back into plank or modified plank on your knees. It's always a great option, especially if you're building up your strength. Exhale into downward facing dog. Remember, you might need to step your hands and feet a little closer together on this. Shift that weight back and up with the hips, ears between the upper arms. We're going to create a 
the look of the top of a triangle with our body. Bend the knees slightly. Step up towards your hands into Uttanasana forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, sitting into chair. Inhale, up and open. All right, we're going to do that same thing on the opposite side, and then we'll do that same sequence again, but I'm going to add a little extra to it. So taking your time to ground back into your Tadasana, your mountain pose, and we're broadening through the collarbones, open the chest, the belly button pulled up and in, the chin in, crown of the head up toward the sky when you're ready. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, guiding those hands down to the heart as you transition to chair. Utkatasana. Inhale, half lift. Nice long back, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, step your left foot back now. We're going to keep that heel lifted behind. Sweeping those arms up into crescent lunge. Hips are forward like headlights. Left hand on the inside, gentle twist to the right. Inhale, lift back up to that lunge, and then we're gonna transition to warrior two. So we're gonna pivot that back foot, opening up, and just check our alignment. Sometimes that front knee wants to carve in, so we wanna keep that kneecap straight forward, nice strong back leg, toes pointing straight, torso straight up from the spine. Our gaze is forward, our drishti over the front fingertips. Inhale, lengthen that front leg as we lift up. Exhale, back to warrior two, you can deepen it here. Inhale, back up. Exhale, warrior two. And then one more time, inhale up. Exhale, warrior two. That back arm is gonna sweep around to the front. Pull back into your bow and arrow. Visualize your bullseye, your goal, and release. Palm forward, inhale, reverse warrior. As we shift to the floor, lift that back heel up and bring those hips forward. As you come all the way down, those arms, step back into a nice solid plank or modified plank. So that solid plank you're pressing, holding out the chest, neutral back, tailbone pointing back toward the heels, gaze is straight down. Exhale into downward facing dog. Bending the knees slightly. Step up toward the hands. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Nice flat back, exhale, chair. Inhale, press up and open. Okay, this next round, we'll move, we'll move a little bit faster on these, but if you prefer a slower pace, then please feel free to do that. You omit some of the movements. And then I'm going to add in, once we're in down dog, we can lift our leg up and move into pigeon. If you don't want to do the three-legged dog, you can just stay in down dog. And I'll, I'll cue that once we get there. So let's refresh those feet. Standing in our tall mountain, Tadasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale. Transitioning to chair. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, right foot steps back, crescent lunge. Exhale, 
Exhale, right hand comes on the inside, gentle twist. Inhale, lift back up. Exhale, transition to warrior two. Inhale, lengthen your front leg. We'll just do this one time. Exhale, a little bit deeper into that warrior two. Inhale, back arm sweeps around. Exhale, pulling back. Releasing your bow and arrow. Inhale, reverse warrior. And then cartwheel those arms as we bring that hip forward by lifting that heel up. Inhale into plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. So your option here is to lift your right leg up to three-legged dog. If that doesn't feel comfortable for you, you can just hang out right here and down dog. So option to lift that right leg up, opening up that hip, bringing that heel towards the bottom. I'm gonna keep that weight distrib distributed equally on each hand. Inhale back up. You know, everyone, even if you stay in your down dog, is gonna bring the right knee toward the right wrist. Settle it down, and you just slide that lower leg into kind of a diagonal shape. And unfortunately, this is my side with my knee injury, so I'm not gonna demonstrate this as well, but you're gonna slide that leg back behind you and open up through your chest into pigeon. So if you're pretty tight in your glutes, your hip might be lifted like mine, or if you have a knee injury, um, but some of us will be all the way down. But once we're here, you can draw your forearms down into this, into pigeon. And just kind of shift around, make sure it feels comfortable. I would say you, you can feel it in your muscles, like your muscles stretching, but you don't want to have pain in your joints. So I'm gonna make sure that we feel comfortable there. And then those hands come up under the shoulders, curl that back to wonder, we're gonna lift up and transition back to that down dog where we started. Bending those knees slightly, walk the feet toward the hands, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale in the chair. Remember, tailbone points back toward that mat. Inhale, up and open. All right, let's shake those feet out. Come to the top of your mat. We'll do everything on the opposite side and have a couple balance postures for you and then we'll transition back to the ground. Inhale, arms up. Sliding down into your chair. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, left foot comes back with that heel lifted. Up in a crescent lunge. Exhale, left hand comes down as you do a gentle twist. Palm is facing the same direction you're looking. Nice strong back leg. Inhale, lift back up. And then we'll transition by pivoting that back foot into warrior two. Might need to guide that front foot in front of the back foot. Drishti gaze to the front. Inhale, lengthen that front leg, come up. Exhale, deepen your warrior two, your Vajrasana two. Back arm is gonna swing around to the front, pull back into your bow and arrow. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, cartwheel your arms, but start by lifting that back heel, shift your hips forward before you come down. Step back into your plank, modified plank. Tailbones pointing back to the heels, belly button up. Press away from your mat. Feeling that strength through the abdominals, back muscles, leg muscles, 
Exhale into downward facing dog. Here we have that option to lift the left leg up or stay in down dog, your choice. Lifting up. Once you get to that highest level, you can open the hip, pull the heel towards the bottom. And then inhale back up. Okay, so now everyone, even if you are in down dog still, we're gonna bring that left knee up toward the left wrist. Go ahead and settle it down on your mat. Slide that lower leg in a diagonal and then come on back into your pigeon. Walking those hands back, lengthening out, open the chest. That back leg is straight back from the hip and then you can come down to your forearms if you'd like. A lot of people like this variation. So you can see my, this side looks a lot different than the other side. I just happened to have a, I relapse on my knee where my knees hold back up last week or so. So I had a little bit of a setback. One more deep breath in and out. And then arms come under the shoulders, back toe curls under. And we're gonna lift up and transition to downward facing dog. Bending the knees, step forward, Uttanasana, forward fold, inhale, half lift. Nice flat neutral spine, exhale, sitting back into your chair, nice strong legs. Inhale, pressing up and Okay, as promised, I have two balance poses for you. Balance is kind of a funny thing. It um, just takes practice. Um, and we're not normally gonna put ourselves in these positions unless you do yoga a lot. So um, I invite you to use a wall or if you have a chair or a counter nearby to utilize that um, until you feel really comfortable with your balance and you can let go and, and see how you do. But Important, um, important thing to practice and work on. So let's start with stork pose. And how you're gonna bring that right leg up and your arms up with those cactus arms like we did in the lunge position. I'm just gonna hold this here again. If you have a wall or something to hold on to, that'll help. You'll, you might feel a little you know, shaky and wobbly as all those little muscles try to balance and engage. And if you fall out of it, just have fun with it. That's, that happens. So don't worry about trying to hold it for a certain number of seconds. Okay, this next one, we're gonna cross that ankle right above the knee and we're gonna sit into standing pigeon. So another glute work here, tight glute spot. And we're sitting like in chair. This is sometimes called one-legged chair. Chest is open here, shoulders back and down. And then as we stand up, we release that leg and shake it out a little bit. And we'll do that on the opposite side. Left leg comes up. Arms up, stork pose. And then transition, bringing that heel right above the ankle and sit down again. If you have a chair or a wall, feel free to use it. Chest is open, nice flat back, shoulders away from the ears. Standing pigeon or sometimes called one legged chair. Hold that for one more breath. And then inhale, lift up, 
stepping down and shake it out. Okay, let's transition back to our mat. If you have a blanket, that might be comfortable. And I'm gonna finish with a little bit of core work. I like to add core work into yoga just because having a strong core is so important for yoga. So to keep that regular strengthening happening, so it makes all of our postures a little bit more easier and effective. So we'll do a little bit of that work and then we'll do some cool down movements and prepare for our Shavasana. We'll go ahead and roll down. Gonna bring the hands behind the head. The elbows slightly draw forward. In neutral position with my pelvis. I have a little space under my back. So I exhale, lift those shoulder blades up and come back down. Let's do about 10 of these. Just kind of warming up those abs. And then we'll switch to a crisscross, so opposite elbow, or actually I think more um, shoulder to the knee, so I get a good lift and twist. We'll do one more set, each side, relaxing that head, drawing your hands to your side, bring those legs up into a tabletop position, we're going to do some toe taps, and this is more focused on the stabilization, and you'll feel it more in the lower portion of the abdominals, so just draw that one leg down and come up, and the other leg taps and come up. Now, on this one, the tendency is to let that leg kind of fall. So we want to keep it up at 90 degrees. You'll feel that more in your abdominals. So tap right and left. One more on each side. And before we move on, let's bring those knees in toward our chest. Give that back a little release. Let's go back to that tabletop position. This time our arms come straight up from our shoulders. This is um, called dead bug. Right arm and left leg. Uh, so the right arm and left leg are gonna pull away from each other. It's a little bit tricky for the head, the brain. The other hand and um, leg stay completely still. And then we come back and we switch left arm, right leg. And the other arm and leg stay completely still. So that just remember the arm and leg move away from each other. That hopefully should help every once in a while. Weird things happen, it's okay. <laughs> we'll just create a new exercise. And come up, just keep going. Opposite arm and leg, alternating. I don't know if you could hear it earlier, but I had a landscaper neighbor on the outside. I think when I edit this, I'll be able to drown out the background noise. And now someone is like going to town in the kitchen right now. You may not be able to hear it, but 
That's what happens when you work from home, right? Okay, we'll do one more. And bring those knees in. I'll feel a nice release for that back, which those back muscles are getting involved quite a bit there. Okay, I have one more ab exercise and then we'll do our cool down positions. Okay, we're in a tabletop again, arms out to the side. We're gonna let those legs fall to the side and you're gonna peel up and touch the outside of your leg. And then we'll roll through to the opposite side, peel up. And you lift up onto your forearm as you do that. So I'm sitting up like that. To make this a little more challenging, you could extend those legs and come all the way up onto your hand for a little bit more of a pike position. Or you could just stick with that original one. Instructors, we, we spend a lot of time making it look really easy, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we don't do that. I'm gonna do, finish this set, we'll do one more. One more set. Okay, let's come on down, extend those legs out. So my cool down positions are some of my absolutely favorite things. So uh, we're gonna have a hip flexor one. We're gonna have a lower back QL and then a nice hamstring adductor abductor, which will really feel good in the hips when you're done. So let's start with the hip flexor. If you have a block or a pillow, um, to put underneath your sacrum. I highly recommend that. Um, alternatively, um, once we get into this, I'll show you how you can do this at home for that area as well. So you're gonna put the block of that pillow right under, or you can fold up a blanket right underneath the, your sacrum, that triangle bone at the end of the spine. So it's kind of behind the, between the, the butt cheeks there. So it's not on the low back. You won't feel it touching the low back. Then one knee's gonna come in and the other leg is going to lengthen. Now, if you don't have a block or a pillow, you can just do this flat on the um, mat, but this creates more of a extension to stretch the uh, hip flexor there. And if you do this at home and you are on the edge of your bed, this is a great one. You dangle that leg off the edge of the bed to create an even deeper stretch. Bring that knee in and a little bit out to the outside and you'll feel it. Um, this straight leg, push that thigh down towards your mat. I'll open it up a little bit more as well. If you hold a stretch for at least seven seconds, seven to 10, there's a, um, let's see how I can explain this, like a, a Golgi tendon organ that is responsible for you know feeling the tension in the muscle. So after so many seconds, it'll it'll release and allow that muscle to to stretch and lengthen a little bit more. So that's why it is important if you're going to do your static stretches to hold them at least ten seconds, and ideally you could go up to thirty. And um, if you're really trying to work on your range of motion, you could repeat that. So you know, holding something for like 30 seconds and then doing it a couple more times. So we just transition to the opposite leg, pulling that knee in and we're ground out that leg by pushing that thigh down towards the mat.
and then let's release. We're going to remove that block out from underneath and extend those legs out. This is another one of my favorite, all the banana, banana, um, awesome, awesome. So stretch open, draw those feet over to your left, and then you reach to the left as well. So you're creating this crescent shape and banana shape with your body. But when you lean to the left, sometimes people want to lift that other side up. And I want you to make sure that you connect your shoulder blades and your bottom is still connected. You're facing straight up. Then you're going to lift your right leg up and cross that ankle right over the other one. Now, once you do that, you should feel it through that waist and then that muscle in that low back, that QL, the quadratus lobarms, reach over. Okay, releasing that ankle, walking those feet over to the right now. And we reach to the right, creating that arc, the banana shape, crescent moon shape, and then left ankle lifts up and crosses. Left foot crosses over the right, feeling that opening into the waist and the low back. One more big breath in and out. Okay, releasing that ankle. Now this is the probably a, a crowd favorite here. This is where you use your um, hand towel or your yoga strap if you have one. And let's start with our legs bent, especially if you have really tight hamstrings, it's good to start with a bent leg and then we'll transition with it straight in a second. So we're going to work on um, our hamstrings and we'll do a little adductor abductor stretch with it to complete. So you're going to take your strap or your towel over the arch of your foot. Let's start with our right foot first. As we lengthen that out, you can point and flex your foot. And if you're really tight in those hamstrings, you might find you have a slight bend in your knee and that's okay. So you don't have to force it. Some people are, they have hyperextension in their knee joint, kind of goes back in the other direction. And you want to keep a little micro bend. You don't want to overdo it with the hyperextension in the joints. If you feel comfortable, you can lengthen out that opposite leg. That's going to increase the the uh, feeling of that stretch, and then you ground that bottom leg. So kind of push that thigh down towards the mat. You have one hand on each side of the strap or your towel. You can pull your toes back towards you. That will also intensify it. And then both um, ends of the strap or the towel are gonna go in your right hand, because it's your right leg up. The left arm is gonna go to the side in a T, this is when we're going to go open to the side and stretch those adductors, those inner thigh muscles. As you do that, try to keep that hip grounded. And you're only going to go as far as you don't like lift all the way up and fall over. So just, just allow it to open. I would say your body should talk to you, not yell at you. Some of these stretches, it should, should be talking to you, but it's not screaming at you. You're going to hold it in that sweet spot. As you begin to bring your leg back in, just engage those abs, kind of supporting that spine. We'll switch hands, so you're going to grab both ends of the strap with the opposite hand. The right arm comes to the side, and we now um, allow it to cross over. And this one's great. I feel it in my glute 
in the um, the, the IT bands or that TFL, the hamstring still. So good stuff happening here too. You can pull your toes back towards you. Give a little tug on that foot if you want, not too intense. And again, your body's talking to you, not yelling at you. You could also pull your leg a little bit closer to intensify the stretch. But again, you're just, you're, you're feeling inside of your body and going to what feels good to you. Don't try to mimic exactly what I'm doing. Engaging your abs as you transition back up. One hand on each side, see if you can bring that leg a little bit closer this time. Let's release that um, strap or towel off and come down. Just take a moment to feel the difference between your right and left leg. And I, I recommend if you have time, you can do you can do that whole series a couple times through and really start to open up that hamstring area, that hip area, that whole hip, hip area actually. Okay, let's bend that leg, the legs in. We'll switch sides. Left foot comes up. Extend, we'll start by pointing and flexing. Remember the opposite leg is bent because it's just a less intense stretch for the hamstring just to start out preparing. And pulling that leg a little bit closer. Opposite leg can then lengthen and you're grounding that leg. So pushing that thigh in towards your mat. You can pull the toes back towards you to deepen it. Some people um, like to bend and straighten their leg a little bit or keep their leg bent. Let's take some nice deep cleansing breaths. You can also, I always like kind of play around with where some people holding the strap way back here, but sometimes if you inch up closer with your hands, it, it feels a little bit better. So play around with that, see what feels good to you. Both ends of the strap now go in your left hand, right hand comes out to the outside in a T. When you're ready, you're gonna open that leg, opening up through the inner thigh. Again, you're only gonna go to the point that feels appropriate for you. As soon as you feel that sweet spot, your body's going, hello, but not, not cussing you out. And then as you transition back in, just engage those abs to support your spine. Switch hands, other hand comes out to the side, and then we're going in the opposite direction. Remember all those options apply, you can pull the pinky toe back, you can draw the leg closer. Now that stretch of the hamstrings. You can give a little tug with that strap. Feel that right there in the hip. Just breathe into that. Okay, when you're ready, go ahead and come back to center. One hand on each side. Let's see if you can go a little bit closer in this time. And again, if that was, you know, felt pretty good to you and your hamstrings are really tight, highly recommend this one on a regular basis. Um, 
and cycle through it several times. It's also great because this is one of the best hamstring stretches because you're on your back. So your back's not getting strained at all in this. It's just a full, full uh, work for that hamstring. And a lot of other hamstring stretches, we've got our back involved. So, okay, let's release that foot. If there's any other poses that you're familiar with or stretches you feel like your body needs before we transition to Shavasana, corpse pose, you're welcome to do those. A lot of people like a little happy baby here. Sometimes people do a little shoulder stand if that's in your practice. Sometimes even just a little lower back rotation here with the knees coming side to side. With the knees coming in. And then for your Shavasana, if you want to put a blanket on or a sweatshirt, so you're comfortable. Um, another thing, when people lay like this, sometimes their back hurts. So you could put a pillow or a cushion underneath your knees, like a, a, or a yoga bolster if you have one of those around, but a lot of people don't. Um, and that'll release some pressure on the low back. If you don't have those things, you can keep your legs lifted and let your knees fall into each other. That tends to reduce the pressure on your low back because sometimes when people are here, they're like, oh, my back hurts and it's not comfortable to be in Shavasana. So please make yourself comfortable. If you feel comfortable closing your eyes, go ahead and do that. See if you can draw the shoulders away from the ears. Relax your jaw. Smooth the muscles over your brow. See if you can relax those facial muscles a little bit more. You can even put the tongue, the tip of the tongue behind your front uh, top teeth, right on the roof of your mouth and relax the jaw. As you scan down through your body, see if there's any muscles still kind of holding on. Maybe you can allow a little bit more release through the arms. Sometimes I find I'm holding my legs up and I can release my quads, front part of the thighs. With each breath, just allow your body to be supported by the floor. Allow your body to just melt, release, relax, receive, let go. And then bring your awareness to your breath, the ebb and flow, the inhale, exhale, the rise and fall of your breath. If there are any thoughts that come in, just allow them to float by. And at once the sky is like your consciousness and the clouds are your thoughts. So we just allow those thoughts to float on by. Returning your awareness to the present moment, back to your breath.
The next inhalation, go ahead and bring a little bit more energy and vigor into your breath. Bring that awareness throughout your body. So just notice how your body feels compared to maybe how you felt before you started the practice. Just enjoy that feeling. When you're ready, you can roll to your side and transition to a seated position or some people like to stretch or some people just pop up. You can do however you want. But you definitely want to come up a little bit more slowly. All right, well, thank you for doing the practice with me. If you ever have any questions, you're always welcome to reach out and ask. I'm always happy to help. So we close our practice by bringing our hands to our heart center and up to the forehead. Namaste.